that, but right now I'm not. It, ahead, everything Cooper. you said, Courtney, about the Eagles is spot on. I'm going to challenge Mad Dog because I think he kind of buried the lead there. You think that Dak Prescott is is overrated? In what yes. world, sir? Absolutely. <laughs> Booger. Booger. Uh, come How on. so? Well, he, he's not top 10 quarterback in the NFL. No way. If you look at the that's not what you said. No, no, no. You, you didn't say whether he was top ten. Well, you I said he's 11. overrated. Those yes, were your words. Explain to me how he's overrated. Well, um, first off, has he ever won a road playoff game in his career? Did he play well against San Francisco? Played poorly. I mean, he didn't play well against the Rams in the NFC second round game a couple of years ago. I just don't. I'm not a big believer. I listen. He's good. He's decent. But if you look at the quarterbacks in the NFL that can win a Super Bowl, I don't know if Prescott can do that. And I guess that, and I think because he's a Let's Dallas not confuse. Uh, go ahead. Go let's ahead, not Luther. confuse accomplishments from a from a team standpoint with deciding whether or not the individual player is overrated. Uh, I remember last year in Tampa, first game of the season, Dak Prescott, Tom Brady on the Play same well. field. Mm -hmm. Who was Play the well. best player on the field? It was Dak Play Prescott. Well. He was the best player on the field that night. Okay, so that showed me that Dak Prescott belongs in the upper echelon of quarterbacks in the National Football League. I don't live in my city now. Nah. this shit ain't pretty now. Nah. I'm from Noble, he get gritty, y'all. He in that full throw with a chopper, that whole 50, y'all. Huh? He trying to kill you over kitty, y'all. Huh? Make sure no city, y'all. I'm outside at the it down on a Monday. I was trapping on that one. What's good, everybody? It's your boy Kama. Be back with another video, man. Hey, man, real quick, right? Um, you see the clip. The clip is self-explanatory, man. I always like to preach about narratives, right? And how people use narratives. And when you question about your narratives and your logic, some people don't have logical answers, right? When Booger McFarland asked the gentleman, I don't know the gentleman's name, what makes him overrated and what things like that, he goes to, he don't go to actual gameplay and attributes. He goes to, did he play great in the San Fran game? He got outplayed in, by Jimmy Garoppolo. Oh, did he, um, which really didn't happen either, but... Oh, when Booker McFarlane say, well, even though they lost, he was the better quarterback that night in the opening night when he played the GOAT, Tom Brady. He was the best quarterback on the field. He went toe to toe. That was, that showed me that he belonged in the upper echelons in these conversations. Once again, silence, right? See, quickly, this is not what the video is going to be about, but I just wanted to address it. Like, to me, it'd be hilarious, though. It's hilarious because... Like I keep saying, we we continue to do that. Continue to do that. Like Booker McFarlane said, y'all mix a compliment accomplishments with the guy's actual talent. So it's un, to me, it's not it's not a question that he's not not a question that he's in the top ten, in my opinion. But neither here nor there. But I wanted to segue to real quick. I wanted to segue to the um. defense right we might have the most competitive the reason why I feel like our defensive line can be dangerous because we might have some of the most motivated front seven coming into this year that we had in a long time and I, when, I, when I say motivated front seven, just listen, hit me out. Never Gallimore missed 11 games, right? This is Never Gallimore. This is his third year. Like, you're, you're fighting to see if they want to pay you or not. Yeah, excuse me. I had to tell something real quick, but... um. They're fighting, Neville Gallimore is fighting to see if they want to pay him or not. This is year three. 
This is the year that you take off and prove you're worth keeping around. Then you got O.C. Diggy Zua, who played the same position, who had a good rookie year. Like, and sometimes he looked real explosive. He hit the rookie wall towards the end, which is to be expected because he was asked to play so many snaps because of all the injuries he had. He started to pick it back up towards the end. Um, got D-Law, who just purely motivated because it's a new sheriff in town. The guy, for the first time, you ain't the sack leader. And it's in danger even if you're unhealthy. So even if you're healthy, you got Michael Parsons, hungry for more. You got Dante Fowler, who came from a terrible defense in Atlanta. He's he's He sees the opportunity to rush with these guys and can be hungry. I mean, he was the leading sacker in Atlanta last year with five sacks, but I mean, he had an injury with his as well as well. You got Darren Armstrong, who just signed the little two-year deal. You got Sam Williams, who's fighting to be a vital part of the rotation. The second-round pick. Like, the list goes, you got Quinn Bohanna, who we drafted nose guard last year. You got Ridgeway. You got, you even got Ghostin, who we drafted last year, who's put on 20 pounds of muscle and trying to play inside and outside. I just think there's so much competition there. And so much talent there at the same time that it's like this defensive line could be really scary. It can be really scary at night. And I said it last year, the the potential our defense had. And and it's crazy that Dan Quinn said himself, he still didn't get a chance to really operate with all his toys, so to speak. Cause he didn't get a it wasn't the time last year when he had his full healthy roster and when he could he could play around with different looks and ideas with Michael Parsons coming off this side or coming that side. We still didn't get a chance to see the full unleashing of the defense. So to me that's gonna be scary, man. Only thing I only thing I worry about defensive line wise is hold on the run. If we if like we were okay against the run last year, but it was times when we did when we got tired, got pushed off the ball a bit. Um, more notably, when we lost Brent Irvin at the end of the season, what, what, like towards the middle of the season with a season end the injury, you like it was noticeable because Brent Irvin was a dog. He's a dog versus the run. So, I mean, those are just my quick thoughts, man. Just, I mean, let me know what y'all think in the comments. Or remember, like, and subscribe, support, comment. Salute. We out of here.